How's it going guys? It's Revelations and today we are starting a new video type on the channel. Every two weeks I will be either on Tuesday or Thursday we will we'll figure it out and get a schedule set but every two weeks I will be posting what we now call an anime talk. What this is going to be is me watching one season of anime of whatever anime I decide or whatever anime you request as the viewers and I would love requests it'd be awesome. I will watch that season all the way through in both dub and sub and give you my opinions, my reactions, and my review on that said anime. With that, I do want to make mention right off the bat, as soon as I possibly can, I do not own any of this content. I did not help create nor create any of this content. This is completely for review purposes. So please, I'm not trying to steal credit for any of this. All for review purposes. And yeah, so I really hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the structure. And if you don't, let me know so we can start changing the structure because I want this to be a permanent thing on the channel as I really do love anime and I love talking about it. And I would love to have interactions with the fans and with the viewers in the comment section below if you have different, different opinions or if you have similar opinions and we can just talk about it, you know? So with that, this episode is going to be on season one of My Hero Academia. And if you don't see from the background or you haven't seen previous videos, I absolutely love this show, but I will try my hardest to keep all bias out of it. With that, let's get into our very first anime talk. Today we will be talking about My Hero Academia Season 1. With that, I want to say that there will be spoilers for My Hero Academia, uh, but if you have seen My Hero Academia and you just kind of want a quick recap on how it's going or how season one was and what it meant or the growth of the characters this is your place to get that information now and this is your place to hear my opinion and my outtake on my hero academia season one so first thing to make note of is shonen shonen is the creator of this anime or not the creator it was created by kohi Hor horikoshi i think but shonen was the big producer of this anime and the reason that's important is because we have to take into consideration that Shonen is also the people who made the big three, which is One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. Some people replace Bleach with Dragon Ball. I am one of those people, but the big three are technically One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. Those big three have kind of, I don't want to say died, I know it's going to hurt some people's feelings that Naruto never will die, but they're, they're getting old. So those three have kind of passed their time, and new animes are coming in such as Boruto, My Hero Academia, and Black Clover. So basically just Black Clover, Clover and My Hero Academia. Boruto, yeah, We can do a review on that one later. But My Hero Academia is created by Shonen. What that means is the anime isn't predestined to be good, but you gotta admit, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach, and Dragon Ball is a pretty good back record for a company to have when coming into making a new anime, especially in today's age where technology has gotten better, drawings have gotten better, lip syncing, dubbing has gotten so much better. And that's something I do want to mention about this anime specifically. The dub on it is great. I know that might lose me some, my, some reputation points, but the dub on My Hero Academia is so spot on and so great. I absolutely love it. Deku's played by Justin Briner, who actually plays another one of my favorite characters, which is Luck in Black Clover. And All Might is uh, voiced by the same person who did Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha. That's uh, Christopher Sabat. And Bakugo, I love his voice actor. He does, I, hasn't, I haven't noticed his voice in too many other things. He's in Black Clover at one point. But I haven't noticed his voice in many other places. But absolutely love the uh, voice actors there. So I did watch it all the way through in dub and sub. And I will admit, I'm sorry, there's some animes I will prefer sub in every single time. But My Hero Academia is better in dub in my opinion. If you have a disagreeing opinion on that, please leave it in the comments. Let me know. Let me know why, though, besides something like if you like dub, you suck. Anything besides that, I will happily have a conversation with you on it, and it will be awesome. So this anime specifically definitely fits the normal shonen procedure. And when I say that, our main character is a young man, a young child, a young boy who doesn't have his father around. Actually does have his mother. It broke the it broke the chain on that one. Does have his mother around, and of course has this huge dream to become something that he technically can't become because he's missing a critical element. 
In this case, he's missing a quirk, which in this society, in this anime, is a superpower. He ha doesn't have one whatsoever, so he can't become the number one Hokage, the number one hero. You see where it kind of starts to intertwine and seem like the same thing? Well, it is. And a lot of people take that for granted and say, because they're repeating something means that they're not trying, or be it means that an anime is not good because it's the same story. That's false. Everyone loves a underdog. Everyone loves this story. And if they didn't like this story, they wouldn't keep making animes like this. So I can't, I'm not going to agree with anyone if they say, oh, I've seen this story 15 times. It's not good now. That's not true. This anime does it good and it does it almost better than other animes that have the exact same storyline or ex the exact same premises. So with that, Deku does not have a quirk. He doesn't have a power. And then he comes across All Might, which is the main good guy or the, the, he's not the main character, but he is the assist to the main character. We will see All Might almost just as much as the main character all throughout the first season as they are very closely linked, which you'll understand more as we get further into the analysis of this season. So... One big thing to take note of is the I personally love the art style of the of this anime compared to others. With that, the kids look like kids. And you may understand what I'm saying right off the bat. If you don't, watch some other animes and you'll notice that kids you'll you'll watch an anime for a month and a half thinking that these kids are like 19, 20 years old, and then at one point they're like, I'm 12, and you're like, whoa, that's not okay. In this anime, the kids look like kids, but the adults look like real adults. Shota Aizawa, which is their homeroom class teacher, which again we'll talk about later, and All Might and every other adult in the show looks like actual adults, and the children look like children. And I, I like the distinction there. Some animes don't do that, and they make it very hard to read between the lines. This is not one of them. They do a great job on that. So... Another thing is the soundtrack. Wow, this anime's soundtrack is so, 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 so good. Some examples of that are You Say Run and I Will Become a Hero. Both of these will blow you away. You'll be watching the show and then you hear that music just kind of start to ding, 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 ding in the background a little bit and you're like, oh, what's about to happen? Your heart starts racing. You, you start getting emotional. You start wanting something to happen and it's so, so great to see. Um, I think an anime that has a good soundtrack is perfect. If it doesn't have a good soundtrack, it takes away so much. And you can see the same thing in horror movies, which aren't anything like anime, but if a horror movie has a good soundtrack that builds you up, it just makes it so much better, and it's the exact same with anime. And My Hero Academia kills it when it comes to the soundtrack. So this season had 13 episodes. From episode 1 to episode 13, we see the beginning of Deku as a normal kid with no quirk, with no power. We then meet All Might, who has a quirk that we don't know about or don't understand. No one really does, but we know that he is the number one hero. And they have, they have an interaction early on where they have to fight this sludge monster. With that, Izuku Midoriya, or Deku, puts his life on the line to help one of his classmates, who is terribly mean, Bakugo Katsuki. What that means is that Deku, though he does not have a quirk, is showing the characteristics and the heart of a hero, but he's not actually a hero and he can't be because he doesn't have a quirk. And at one point, All Might, his idol, Deku's idol, and the one who he's looked, for, looked to and looked at his entire life, looks him in the eyes and says, you cannot be a hero because you don't have a quirk. And this breaks Deku. But... Even after that, Deku shows these great potential, this great potential in his heart being willing to do the heroic things even though he doesn't have the quirk to do so. With that, he sacrifices his life potentially for Bakugo Katsuki after he's been caught by a sludge villain. Luckily, All Might is there to witness this and take some of his reserve power that he has and destroys the sludge villain and then transfers his quirk to Deku. Deku now has the same quirk that the most popular, most strong hero has, but his body isn't trained for it and is not prepared for it. That is when we get into the training arc, or episode 3, otherwise known as Roaring Muscles. And there are some good things about this episode, some bad things. The good things are definitely the whole workout arc 
and everything where he goes from being a zero to a hero or a big or kind of stronger is all done within a single episode and that is so big in the anime world because what you always see is animes taking things and draw drawing them out so so long and making them take up five six seven twelve episodes just for a single training section but my hero academia does not do that all throughout season one not a single filler episode not a single drawn out moment everything happens so on pace and it's so nice to see it's really refreshing to watch an anime that does the proper thing when it comes to pacing so episode three we see all of the training get done deku goes from being a scrawny kid he does the all-american workout plan and gets big and buff this episode was so inspirational and so great in so many ways that there actually was a workout plan based off of the same plan that deku did I'll leave the link in the description below. If you are into working out and you want to do some sort of workout, click the link. There's an entire thing made just so you can work out the same way Deku did. Really cool link. I've looked at it before. I've tried the workout. It is not easy whatsoever. It is a pretty difficult workout. One of the big lines from that episode specifically that everyone loves is the eat this line. And I'll, I'll put a little picture up here. But everyone loves that line. I highly suggest getting the little cup that says it, it's a little cup. But next we have uh, episode four, which is start line. Where What we see here is Deku going to take the hero entrance exam. What that means is that all these kids right now, including Bakugo and all the other kids around the world or around Japan that have these quirks, of course, want to become heroes because in a world where heroes are awesome you and there, you want to be one. So to do that, you have to get into a high school that supports heroes or a hero high school. With that, the one that everyone wants to get in is called UA and Deku, Bakugo, and a bunch of other people that we meet later go to apply. Deku just got his power the day before. He just now has the ability to use it, but he has no clue how to do so. And we see that progression from start where he has no power to becoming a strong person with no power becoming a, a person with power who goes back to being on that zero level he went from zero to 100 on the physical level and then went from 100 back down to zero now that he has a power because he's at the very beginning when everyone else has had 16 17 years to train their quirk and to learn it a little bit better so with that deku then goes into his uh first fight scene quote unquote it's not against another person it's only against robots but it's the way that UA High School or the Hero High School trains or sees if that sees if someone is capable of being a hero or has the abilities to put forth to be entered into the school. With that, Deku gets zero points. He completely flunks the test, but he does take his, his last couple seconds of the test to st save one of his upcoming friends later in the series named Uraka. This is the first time that we see her, and this is we get a little bit of character development for her, which is really awesome to see early on, because a lot of times you don't get to see that character development in the other characters until a little bit further in animes. So you get to see Uraka, you get to see Aoyama, you get to see Tinya, and all these photos are of the characters I'm mentioning. And then the next episode, you get to see Kirishima, Ashido, Kaminari, Yayorozu, Shoto, Tokiyami, Su, and Bakugo again, of course. And as Bakugo would say, all the other people in Class 1A are just the rest of the extras. They're not really important. You don't at any point get to see any more character development on any of the people in Class 1A except those, especially in Season 1. With that, you also get to meet Mr. Aizawa, which is the homeroom teacher for all of these students. A homeroom teacher is basically like, if you've never had a homeroom teacher, it is a person that you go to in between classes and at the beginning and end of school days so they're the that's the teacher that you see most often and is basically the one that's in charge of taking care of your personal needs versus your education needs if that makes sense with that great character but one thing that happens in season one that i've never understood is the first time that we get to meet shoto aizawa he has an interaction with all might that seems to be very tense and very tight but the issue is at nowhere at no other point within season one and i know we said we won't mention other seasons but 
even further past that, there is never another tense argument or a tense section between the two. It's like the show built up for a quarter second a problem between the two, but never expounded on it. That is one of my only critiques about season one of My Hero Academia. Next, we have episodes six, seven, and eight. All three of these episodes are focused around the first training section with Deku's powers. This is when All Might sends Deku and Uraraka into a building against Tinya and Kachan, or Bakugo. With that, their whole point is for Bakugo and Tinya to act like villains, while Deku and Uraraka act as the good guys and try to disarm a bomb. It's all training, and none of it's real enemies versus enemies, it's just training for the characters. The thing is, the boiling relationship between Deku and Bakugo has built up so much over the years as Bakugo has always been a bully to Deku while he was a kid because they grew up together and they went to the same little public, private, or the public ch children's school, elementary school together. I don't know what it would technically be called, but they grew up together and Bakugo, once he developed his quirk, then started picking on Izuku very heavily and there was a boiling tension growing between them. So seeing these two fight for the first time really brought a ton of character development out showing the hatred Bakugo has for Deku, but we don't quite understand why, but we also see the passion that Deku has for Bakugo. And again, we don't know why, but it shows that tension there and it makes you wonder why. And it definitely sparks that bit of curiosity in your head, which we see more of later on throughout the season. And we see a lot more of later throughout the entire anime in a whole, which we can talk about in another anime talk whenever we do season two or season three. Also, we get in the next episodes after that, we get episode nine, 10, nine, just nine. We're not going to get to 10 and 11 yet because that's crazy se section. Episode 9 is where we just get a lot more character development with the rest of Class 1A because we get to see them going to the USJ for the first time right there at the beginning before all the bad stuff starts happening, which I'll get into in a second. But we get to see all of them talking and having like a picnic and so on and so forth. They're not a picnic, but they're eating in the cafeteria and so on. And this is where you get to kind of see like the high school section of it versus the superhero section of it. So again, it builds that character development. That episode ends with the very first showing of Shigaraki, which is the leader of the League of Villains, or technically the leader, but not really. So Shigaraki comes into play at the USJ, where all the students go to do safety training, or not safety training, but uh, hero training, where they focus on rescue missions and so on, and to hone their quirks and to get better. With that, when they get there with Shoto Aizawa and another hero named Thirteen, they get attacked by the League of Villains, which is led by Shigaraki, which is the guy with the hand on his face, which you see right there. With that, everyone's in big trouble because the only people they have there is Aizawa and 13. 13 is not an attack hero whatsoever. 13 is mainly there for support, and Aizawa is great against 1v1s, not 1v as many people were there. And you see that starting to form as all the other students get spread out throughout the USJ due to the Warp Hero's ability that it's not going to work out too well for them. Nobody's doing too great. Everybody's holding their own, but nobody's get, gaining, an, gaining an advantage against the enemies. Until, of course, in episode 11, All Might finally shows up at the very end to save Aizawa. The big point here in this episode, the thing that I got, away, got out of it the most was the personal growth in Aizawa. At the very beginning when we meet Aizawa, we know him as the homeroom teacher. Yeah, he's there for the students, whatever. But in this episode, you get to see that Aizawa cares. This is the first time you get to really see that side of Aizawa where no matter what happens, he is going to protect his students. And you can get very, you, you understand very fast that it doesn't matter what happens, Aizawa will be there to protect his students. And it just makes you understand the teacher concept and makes you understand the emotion between the student and the teacher very well. I really enjoy that episode and that character development with Mr. Aizawa. And next, the last episode is episode 13, which was actually, no, the, the two episodes were All Might and In Each of Our Hearts, which is episode 12 and 13, which were the final two in My Hero Academia season one. These episodes showed All Might finally getting to the USJ and protecting Aizawa. And when he does this, 
This is the first time we get to see All Might in his true 100% all out form and it lives up to every bit of detail you could ever want. It is so great. The whole show is giving you all of this meat and all of this like hints at how strong All Might is early on throughout one throughout episode one all the way to episode 11. You get all these hints at how strong he is and he's the number one hero and he saves so many people, but you don't really get to see that. This episode, episode 12 and 13, you see all of it come out at once when he fights this creature called a Nomu, which is one of the creatures that Shigaraki brought along with him for the purpose of killing All Might. With that, the Nomu was enhanced with multiple quirks that had all of the power to kill All Might. All Might ripped through this thing, shot him through the roof, and sent it flying. All Might came in clutch so hard in this anime, this anime, this episode, and wow, was it so impressive. That is one of the things that has made My Hero Academia one of my favorites, is when the characters do decide to show up and show out, they show up and they show out. It is so impressive every single time it happens, with whether it be All Might or Deku later on, or even Kachan. It just, it's always so impressive and so great to see whenever it happens. So... Yeah, that's My Hero Academia Season 1. I really hope I didn't miss too much. I know I tried to go through it pretty quick. I tried to hit every important note. But to give you an end result or an end list of pros and cons, let me get in the middle here so that I can make two even lists. We'll have cons over here, pros over here. So some of the big pros are um, powers. Quirks in general, so cool. Really love the idea of quirks. I love the storytelling. I love everything when it comes to the the building blocks for this anime uh, a negative side was going to be lack of killer character development early on i know it's only season one but there was a little bit of missing sections when it came to character development for a lot of the class 1a students that really didn't get recognized um, another thing in the pros list great dub amazing dub the voice actors so smooth, so great. Another thing in the positives is soundtrack. Absolutely beautiful soundtrack. I couldn't have asked for a better soundtrack. It just brings everything together so well. Um, and I think that's about it. We have character development covered. I know it's it could have been better. We have soundtrack. We have great dubs. We have great storytelling and base building blocks. And I think that's about it for the base level understanding of my hero academia season one so we're gonna go ahead and whoop, delete those and i want to say thank you guys so much for watching it really means a lot this is the end of the uh anime talk please feel free again to leave your opinions your thoughts anything like that down in the description not into the description i'm sorry down into the comments below it means a lot to me especially having those comments in there to have a conversation with you about hey why did you like the anime so much or why didn't you like it or why do you disagree with certain opinions I threw out? If you did like the video, if you liked the format, if you liked the talk, if you liked anything about the video, please feel free to hit the like button down below. It helps the channel. It helps me. It helps this video get sent out to other people. So maybe we can just have a huge, large discussion down in the description, down in the comments below. I keep messing that up. But yeah, so that's it. Again, I really hope you enjoyed it. I put a little bit of, I put a, good bit of work into this making sure that i had everything written out so i didn't miss anything and i hope i didn't and with that i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you for the next anime talk and uh yeah see you then peace out